FM, uh, all of you speaking from KwaZulu Natal, joining us here tonight on a, a frank dialogue on your radio in Gauteng, Alex FM, Social FM, and Sidibeng FM, also joining that conversation. It's a big, big uh, in Daba tonight with my guest, Floyd Chibambu, the Deputy President of the Economic Freedom Fighters. We, we are uh, counting down to the 10th of February as they are launching their manifesto at Moses Madib Mab Mabida Stadium. They promise that it's going to be packed um, uh, to the rafters. And of course, uh, 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 the Deputy President will tell us uh, what preparations are there. But we're also going to be discussing many things. A EFF finishing uh, off last year, 10 years, and what reflections are there. Uh, we'll be speaking with the Deputy President about that and the policies of the EFF. And of course, maybe we'll push him to tell us a little bit, uh, just to give us a taste of what to expect on that 10th uh, of, of February uh, in the EFF's manifesto. KwaZulu Natal, big elections battleground. We saw uh, just yesterday uh, uh, parties, you know, swearing on, you know, their, 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 their ancestors' graves to unseat the ANC out of KwaZulu Natal and also ensure that the so called multi party charter gets on top. But of course, the EFF also promising the same that they are, are confident that they are going to uh, win this particular province. Everybody uh, watching with interest, one of the biggest provinces with a big election chunk. Uh, whoever wins this side will influence how the national picture is going to look like. So it's a frank dialogue. A little later on, we'll allow you to ring and also ask the deputy president questions directly uh, for him to engage uh, with the public. It's a one and a half hour special show here on frank dialogue on your radio. After the break, I start talking to my guest, deputy president Floyd Shibambu. Stay tuned. Time. No, thank you. I know you are, you, are, you, are, you are deployed here in KwaZulu Natal. In fact, I think it has become your permanent home now. Uh, you work in the ground. Am I right to say that you are ready for the 10th uh, of, of February and, and that, uh, you know, that mythical feeling of the stadium is going to happen? Yeah, well, look, all leaders of the Economic Freedom Fighters are deployed to different provinces yes. to focus on elections. Mm -hmm. and they, I've been assigned to convene the Provincial Elections Task Force of the EFF here yeah. in the province of KwaZulu Natal. And we are ready for the launch of the manifesto, but also are ready for the elections, which yeah. we hopefully will take place in May this year. Yeah. And uh, we're going to do very well as the economic freedom yeah. fighters. I'm, I'm very curious to know. You're, are you filling that stadium with KZN voters, or is it a national event where people are going to come with buses uh, 
from everywhere in the country. Now look, in, in terms of the preparations that we are working on now, yeah. we are going to be providing transport strictly for the 11 regions of KwaZulu Natal. We're okay. not going to bus anyone from, from other provinces. From other provinces. Uh, yeah. We're going to strictly bus in people from the province of KwaZulu Natal, from yeah. all the regions, from uh, Amajuba, Otukela, Mkanyaku, De Zululand, yeah. Ugu, Ilembe. You are confident of your growth in case you need to fill a stadium of that, of that size? Yeah, I, I don't think that will be a difficulty because yeah. we've got adequate presence Mm. in all the voting districts of KwaZulu Natal. So the province mm. of KwaZulu Natal has got 4,773 VDs. Yeah. And in all of them, the EFF has got proper volunteers, a minimum of 20 volunteers. Yeah. So even from that number of ground forces and volunteers of the EFF, yeah. uh, we can fill up the stadium. So we are not at panic at all. So yeah. we know that the structures of the EFF are going to fill up the yeah. stadium. Uh, even in the bus verification process, the numbers are already far above uh, what we had anticipated by this yeah. time. Yeah. So we're going to have a very good meeting in Moses Mabida Stadium on the 10th of yeah. February. It's interesting. I mean, that's a sidebar that, uh, you know, there was a controversy around people, you know, organizing buses for people to come to your 10th anniversary rally. Right. Yes. Is the same arrangement happening here, meaning that no, we, so councillors, MPs and so on are, asked, are, are expected to fund those buses that are going to bring people and fill that stadium. It's the side bar, it's not the no, 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 policy that, that is not the approach. So in 2023, yeah. in February 2023, the central command team of the EFF yeah. took a decision that all our public representatives must contribute in celebrating the 10th uh, anniversary yeah. of the EFF, must yeah. at least bring the constituencies that they represent. Yeah. So whatever contribution that they could make in terms of transporting people to the FNB stadium was yeah. going to be appreciated. And uh, there was a certain number of public representatives yeah. who purposefully uh, and, uh, defied the organization and did not do so. Yeah. And then we then enacted and actually got to activate a section in our constitution of the EFF which permits the central command team to recall public representatives and then we then said to them that since you cannot even transport your constituencies please yeah. step down yeah. as a public representative and those who refused were taken to DC and some of them uh, got their membership of the organization discontinued. Sure. Yes. Uh, and it didn't cause eruptions in, in no, the party? No, it didn't. It didn't. Actually, what happens in most instances, we have always taken very decisive action against uh, wayward and ill-disciplined public representatives the, as the EFF. And what has been a scientifically proven reality is that every time we shared some of these uh, wayward and ill-disciplined public representatives, the organization grows faster in those areas where we took them out because uh, they were not adding much value to the organization. Yeah. We actually even assume correctly that maybe people are not coming to the EFF because of them. So, yeah. And then we then pick up in the process of internal management of the organization yeah. and we get to grow far much stronger and far much speedier uh, in those areas. Yeah. So we're getting yeah. stronger and stronger. So every time we shared the skin, of useless yeah. people, it means we're getting stronger. Talking about shedding the skin, at a couple of months ago, I think it was around October, you announced that you had a million members. Right? Yes. Has that number grown or we shedding mm -hmm. and people leaving us? We saw people being given T ANC T-shirts recently with somebody saying they left you 200 people and so on. Just, the, just give me no, a, the, yeah, a so sense the, there. The membership of the organization is consistently growing. Okay. Yeah, And we are never affected, were never affected really by the people who do the parade. Have you audited and this million? Like, yeah, we did. It's like audited. And, yeah. and it's, it's people who are registered to vote because yeah. the membership of the EFF do not allow those who are not registered to vote to become members. Yeah. Uh, and of course, membership is from the age of 16. So, so you could say that you are, you are relatively assured of 1 million national votes. That is a roughly. base. That is the base that we were 100% sure that uh, we're going to count this from is a if million all of your vote. fighters go, yes. to go to the polls. Yes, that yeah. is that is that we are 100% sure that yeah. uh, we will. And we we are not fond, by the way, in the EFF of 
publicly parading people who come and join from other political parties. But there are. We, 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 we actually encourage them to announce their membership of the EFF and then we welcome them publicly. Yeah. Uh, so we are growing every day and yeah. we'll continue to grow. And the good thing I is know that you say you're not parading, our, but, but we recently we have seen you know, the likes of Carl Niaus, Musisio Mukwawa, and Musisio paraded with Sweden full time. I mean, there was a full press conference and the slaughtering of cows in Bumalanga. So, no. But tell me about Carl Niaus. I mean, no, no. So that what must happens, have surprised you too. So what happens? So what happens? <laughs> yeah. Carl Niaus yeah. announced his membership of the but EFF himself. Yeah. And then the leadership of the EFF in the branch which he joined in, I think it's what, 78 in Johannesburg. Yeah, welcome. And, yeah, and welcomed him. Yeah. And the, the same with Advocate Buzo Mkweba, and the same with uh, Linda Sibia here yeah. in uh, uh, Tequini, the same with Makasela Mzobe in the Newcastle municipality. So all the people that got to join, they joined at the yeah. local level. And then the organization says that welcome, yeah. and uh, we really appreciate. Yeah, the Carl Niaus thing was very interesting. Talk to me about that because a lot of people think that whites are scared of you. Like you know, they say, "Oh my God, this is going to be you know Sodom and Gomorrah for whites who are living." That, that's that, that's but, somebody you like know, Carl Niaus joining. You know, Carl, Carl Niaus struggle credentials are know, quite solid. He's yeah. actually so one. He's, are you saying he's not seen as like, white? Uh, yeah, like he's <laughs> actually one of yeah. the most outstanding and one of the most progressive uh, freedom fighters. Like he fought against apartheid, like when some people were being uh, buzzed around and traveling around in the name of the National Union of Mine Workers yeah. and everything else there. Carl Niaus confronted the regime head on and he dared them to kill him if they wanted to do so. Yeah. So he's a, a fighter who is never scared to confront the establishment yeah. And we welcome him in the economic freedom fighters. He will add a lot of value because he has got a lot of qualitative, practical experience. Uh, having been, you know, he was the first, uh, was part of the medializing team, if not a spokesperson of President Mandela when he was released from yeah, prison. But I, I, I didn't think and he would then, go that far back. And, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and post that, he yeah. went, he was a member of parliament before, I think he was chairing the portfolio committee on yeah. environmental affairs. And then he was sent to Netherlands as a as an ambassador and played a critical role in the, 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 a variety of global platforms. So that experience is going to add a lot of value to the collective yeah. knowledge and expertise of the How EFF. do you answer you know, the fact say, that, because since you went back to Mandela, then I also go back to when he was holding a, a, an official and he was now fired for, by the ANC for fraud and, and all of these controversies that has, has made I, I, Yeah, I thought he has adequately... Answer it? Yeah. I think he has adequately dealt with those questions in yeah. terms of uh, the financial difficulties that he, he encountered yeah. Yeah, in, the, in, 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 in one part of his life. Yeah. And uh, then he, he made mistakes which he owned up to. Sure. But that doesn't take away the revolutionary struggle credentials yeah. that he has. It doesn't take away the massive experience. Yeah. Uh, that it's a sort that will end up on your, on your list to parliament. I mean, you can't get that kind of experience to go to waste. So the, all the regions of the economic freedom fighters now, yeah. all the 54 regions, are in the process of nominating members of the EFF who are going to be considered for the National Assembly okay. and the National Council of Provinces and Provincial Legislatures. Yeah. Uh, and um, we will be guided by that outcome. So all of yeah. us are subjected to that particular process. And yeah. uh, if membership of the EFF says that let's take fighter Kalniaus to Parliament, we will definitely do yeah. so. There was a lot of controversy time. around that though, which I wanted to address, yes. where somebody like Muzan Elemani you know, uh, arrived and in two minutes he was already an MP. And people are saying, oh, but, you know, some of us have been here yeah, struggling and fighting. This guy was out there speaking for Jacob Zuma, now suddenly he's an MP. I'm sure it's worth addressing because uh, although there must be a good reason for you to do that, it will always come up as a question about whether or not, you know, there's a queue to do these things or you can just... You know, if I join tomorrow, no I, could, I could suddenly become an MP. There's no queue. Yeah. There's no queue in the EFF. Okay. There's no queue. We deploy people to different responsibilities uh, mm. according to the value that they can add in those particular spaces. And yeah. we correctly had identified that Mzonele Manu would add a lot of value in, uh, in Parliament. And he, indeed, he has 
add a lot of value. So look into the contributions he made in the public procurement bill yeah. in Parliament and the transformative issues that have to be dealt with. The, yeah. You will know that historically he has been a champion Absolutely. of black yeah. participation in the economy and everything else. There. So the experience that he had gained over the years actually got to give the EFF the impactful yeah. uh, contribution in the public procurement bill which he was representing the EFF on but also check the other interventions he's making on oversight he's helping a lot of communities and areas in, in mm. Johannesburg and, and many other areas he visits hospitals so he fit, he fit that quite well. he came, yeah he came in very yeah. well a lot of people actually, were, were having a big speculation when he came that he was, so, was going to bring Musholos with no no he individually and uh, uh, joined and he actually even gave a very sound political reason that the EFF is the most dependable and consistent vehicle that is fighting mm. for majority of our people is fighting for black people and his view which I actually think is also the view of uh, fighter Kalnias is that let all progressive forces unite uh, behind the banner of the economic freedom fighters and fight for economic emancipation, fight the establishment, fight against capitalism, and fight for the benefit of for, for all our people. Yeah. A lot of people see you as a chip of the old block from the ANC point of view. Some can't even see you outside being just an extension of the Youth League or a reincarnation of the Youth League. Right? It's been 10 years, right? Yeah. Are there any assumptions you made 10 years ago when you, when you left the ANC and, and some of you expelled from the ANC and then started the EFF that they have, through the, the inflection of time, been surprised you or proved to be wrong? The assumptions you made when you started the party and now 10 years later that you can share I, with me. I, I wouldn't say they are fundamental surprises and shocks and everything else. There. So, mm. in the founding manifesto of the EFF, well, well, when we do a diagnosis of the political conditions that time, mm. and more or less predict what was going to happen in the future. Yeah. So, we are not surprised even by the quantitative growth of the EFF, even in the pace at yeah. which we are growing. There are no major surprises. We knew that we gradually are going to take the former liberation movement, the ANC, out yeah. of political power, and we are succeeding in doing so. Yeah. We're going to take them out completely now, in May this year, and, yeah. then, and then we constitute a revolutionary socialist pan-Africanist government yeah. of the EFF. Well, uh, you know, it's interesting because it, it, <coughs> when the, the CIC was here yes. uh, for the, with your ground forces, he made a meal of the Ipsos survey, because the Ipsos survey says the NC is at 38 percent, so they are going to go out. Yes. And he's saying that anybody who says the NC will win is not scientific. The, 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 the same survey puts you at 15 percent, neck to neck with the DA. That same survey that he was happy to talk about, that it says the NC will be out of power. Yeah, Can so you address me on that? Yes. Because uh, how are you going to take them out completely when so, you are only at 15? So the... the, the uh, yeah. You know, we thought, and the Ipsos survey, which had put the EFF at 15 percent, yeah. and it put the ANC at 8 percent, was conducted in June, July, even before the 10th anniversary programs of the EFF okay. took shape. And there have been huge milestones and like uh, literally leaps and uh, bounds of movements in terms of the the structures that we have put to prepare for elections. Yeah. So so before we could even do anything yeah. as the EFF, we already placed at fifteen percent. Yeah. Now we have got an election strategy that places at the center of our election machinery. Yeah. Something we call the voting district elections task forces. Mm. So in all the twenty three thousand 600 VDs in South Africa we've got, a minimum of 20 volunteers. Mm. So that gives you like literally 500,000 volunteers. Mm. If they go according to the victory manual of the EFF, we're going to have a decisive victory and we're confident that we'll do so. When you say decisive victory, you're saying 51 percent. So yes, that is what no, we're aiming man, come on, for. That is, that is what we're aiming for and yeah. that is what we're planning for. Yeah. So look, no, everybody's pla is planning yeah. to win, but that is what, but, that is what, that is what but you guys are saying we must be scientific. And, yeah, yes, and th that the is, current poll that is, puts you where then? Uh, okay, so, I hear what you're saying, but yes. where does the current poll put you now? So the current poll puts us just below 20 percent. 
Okay. Yeah, 18, 19. Uh, All right, percent. fine. And let's, that is before we even do the election work. Yeah, let's in say terms of we've got three months to go. So it's not the, like you're going to do anything dramatic in the remaining three. Let's assume that. We're not going to do anything dramatic. We're going to do yeah. everything impactful. Yeah. That is going to illustrate to the people of South Africa that yeah. we're the only dependable weapon, we're the only dependable vehicle that is going to bring yeah. about. Let's, let's, let's go with your theory. Let's say you get 20, maybe 25. Yes. Let's, say, let's, let's be generous and say yeah. 25. So you still have 25, 26 to go to get to 51. Yes. The, the multi-party charter has decided to exclude you. They said, don't work with these people. The pariah is going to be doomsday, they, all sorts of things. So they, they have already, in a sense, put a rock in the path of something that could be like a government of national unity type of thing that you take the ANC out. What's your yeah, plan? Look, you know, the reality of the matter is that the multi-party charter is financed and guided by the white capitalist establishment in South Africa. Okay. Particularly the Oppenheimers. They are the ones who have constituted that. That is why they even forwarded yeah, one of their employees. Yes, this is a fact. It's a fact. Okay. It's a fact. So you can actually even check with the party funding declarations. Yeah. Of Almost that the, that the, that the, 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 the Oppenheimers, Oppenheimers are yes. funding the multi charter yes. as a whole, not yes. not, not the even, DA. Only. Even yeah, even even William Gumede, whom they forwarded to coordinate that, he works for one of the institutes that are, are funded, funded by, by the, the Oppenheimers. Yeah. So yeah, but lots of people use Gumede. No, no, he's look, an look, academic. That is not an academic. He's <laughs> <laughs> a cloud who is being uh, tossed around by the establishment to to achieve their own purposes and. And the Oppenheimers are very much interested in the politics of South Africa because yeah. their major concern is the current reality where the combined votes of the EFF and the ANC yeah. are more than two-thirds in parliament. Yeah. And then the, we're concerned that we almost agreed fully on amendment of Section 25 For the land issues, of the yeah. Constitution, which was going to disrupt the property relations, yeah. their dominance in the economy. I said they are happy and you then didn't. They, they went, they go all out openly. They don't even yeah. hide that the major funders of the Democratic yeah. Alliance, of Action SA, of all these springs of small political parties that are emerging, yeah. are, are, are meant to disrupt that two thirds uh, between the, uh, the ANC and the, yeah. and, the, and the EFF so that they, they possibly will never be an amendment of Section 25 of the Constitution. Yeah. And, and that is what is basically happening. And yeah. at the center of that, they acknowledge the influence, they acknowledge the ideological, political, and moral superiority of the yeah. EFF in guiding the parliamentary politics and the revolutionary politics that were in pursuit of. Yeah. That is why they say that at the foundation of whatever they are funding and constituting, yeah. they should isolate the EFF. The ANC, they are less fearful of because they control yeah. but what's your what i'm saying is that given that context now what's your is, plan because no, this is be what so multiple what, forces that are against so you. this is our, our 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 view by the way and we have never stopped in pursuit of that yeah we have always said that when the anc goes below 50 percent of the vote mm. All opposition parties, irrespective of ideological and political differences, yeah. should coalesce into a force that must take out the ANC from government. They've been mm. given 30 years to be government and they've dismally failed. And we've done that before. It's not the first time that we've constituted a coalition of diametrically different political parties yeah. to remove the ANC from power. We did that in 2016 in the city of Johannesburg, yeah. in Tswane, Nelson Mandela Bay, in but a variety of local municipalities in Mutumulu, Mokopong, in Mitsumaholu, and we tried in Rostenberg. I understand all of that, yes. but it looks like... So that is, what, that, is what, yeah. that, is, that is what our pursuit is all about, yeah. first, as a first step in yeah. terms unite of... Unite all the forces. Unite all the forces yeah. to take the ANC out of power, because the ANC out of power, they it's become... It, it, it will die, natural death. Like, mm. check what happened to the ANC in the Western Cape province and yeah. Cape Metro. They're possibly in their 20s now in terms of the vote, but the when they years. lost for the first time, they had lost with a very small margin. Actually, mm. those who removed them from power had to form a coalition yeah. to take them out of power. And the ANC has to be taken out of power because it has, it has outlived its usefulness. Yeah. But you are confident that that could happen because I, I'm trying to just interrogate we, that is, that is how you are going to coalesce. Yes. That, that, is, that, is, that is what we are 
uh, perpetually in pursuit yeah. of. And I'll tell you something which, by the way, is a reality, is that yeah. the individual leaders of these political parties, the DA and the yeah. Action SA, the IFP, all of those, when we engage with them, yeah. they agree with what we say should happen. Yeah. But the handlers are the ones who are puppet mastering them yeah. to say they're, that they cannot do this. I mean, like, I'll give you multiple examples sure. where we would sit with the entire leadership of Action as a post-2021 local government elections. Mm. We agree, we do a draft statement that we're going to work together. Actually, Emel Mashaba even goes to television and says that uh, everywhere the EFF goes, I'm going with them. Yeah. And then the funders came, then the, the, he issued a statement, I think about 3 a.m. in the morning, to say that they are, they are not going to have any engagement uh, with the EFF. EFF. So you can see that there the is a hand somewhere that is puppet mastering these people. And that is the message which we are going to illustrate yeah. with uh, irrefutable evidence to the people of South Africa that if you vote for these right-wing political parties, yeah. you are just voting for the oppressor, for the exploiter, for the establishment to, yeah. to retain the economic benefits which they gained yeah. through colonialism. In but apartheid. let's be fair. They've already said they don't want to work with you. The DA and their yeah, friends yeah, look, look, said that they don't want to work with that you. Is that right? If they stick to that, that is, yeah. your dream of so pulling if, together everyone yeah. against the ANC seems like it's going to be on shaky ground. Or are you saying they're going to change their minds so once the ANC is below 50? Our aspiration is that if a, a situation presents itself where none of the parties like including the ANC can constitute government our first option yeah is that we should constitute the government minus the ANC. minus the ANC yes that yeah. is our first and then if that doesn't happen we'll cross the bridge when we get there in, but, a, in other but words working with the ANC yeah is not our option it's, it's not your option but but you don't rule it out it's not our option. It's not our option. We are not even thinking about that. Uh, we're not yeah. even thinking about that. So, so basically you are saying that it will be a uh, it 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 that you are going to work with the ANC and EFF ANC coalition is going to be a doomsday. It's actually a pie in the sky because be, that's not even your intention. Look, it will be, the ANC has been given political power like without like really contestation. There was a time they were even having two thirds by themselves in parliament. Yeah. Uh, for 30 years now, that is an yeah. entire generation of period. Like people who were born in 1994 when the ANC took power, are 30 year olds now, like the adults <laughs> married with children, yeah. and there has never been any significant change. And and politically, and ideologically, it will be problematic and opportunistic to could then bring them through the back door. But also the other issue that you must always consider and take into consideration is that mm. one of the discussions, or whenever we have a discussion with the ANC on possible coalition or any mm. sort of that nature, we always put non-negotiable principles that are contained in the founding manifesto of the EFF yeah. to say that the agenda should be about the expropriation of land without compensation, should be about nationalization of mines, banks, and other strategic sectors of the economy. Yeah. Should be about building state capacity with the aim of abolition. And you think tenders. they won't agree to so that? that like, look, look we, 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 we believe, you know, the reason why we have constituted ourselves as a political party is because we believe in, our, in the strength of our our views and perspectives. Yeah. We, we believe that every normal human being yeah. will always uh, accede and surrender to superior logic. That is what we believe that. Yeah. And we think and believe that what we but, represent as the EFF yeah. is superior logic. But if you don't, the majority if, of if, the people if you don't get 51, to. you have to compromise. Surely, and is those it? are yeah, those are postulations that can be dealt with that time. But our purpose now yeah. is to persuade the majority of South Africans to vote for the economic freedom fighters. We are on Frank Dialogue on your radio. We are coming to you live from KwaZulu Natal this evening. As we got some uh, ten radio stations joining from here in KwaZulu Natal in a national imbizo with the deputy president of the EFF. You can give us a ring uh, if you want to participate in the conversation. Um, and uh, you can also send us some voice notes, which we will uh, hopefully be able to, to air tonight. You can call us on 032-481-5521. 032-481-5521.
5521. Of course, you can also send your WhatsApp voice notes on 064-380-0905. 0905. It's a frank dialogue on your radio. After the break, I carry on with uh, Fuller Chief. I'm going to ask him about some of the policies and how they're going to apply them in a contested province uh, like Gozulu Natal, as well as in a contested province like Gaudeng. So stay tuned. Stations tonight in Gauteng, Alex FM uh, joining us, uh, Sosha FM as well as Sidibeng FM here in KwaZulu Natal, who are hosted tonight by Radio Kwezi, Highway Radio joining in as well as North Coast Radio, as well as Radio. Uh, uh, sunny South and Inanda FM. It's a national imbizo here on Frank Dialogue on your radio. Kwasi Natal is, Natal is uh, like in Pumalang. It seems to be known for a lot of corruption. Just recently here, there was some tender of 198 million that was issued for a road that only cost 2 million. We've heard that, uh, We've heard that uh, the department, some department of economic development here wanted to spend some 30 million rand on the summer's hours, only to find that, in fact, the summer people only wanted 8 million. And I can go on. There's the former mayor of Etoquini who stand in trial for some. 280 million rand theft, uh, theft basic and and and, 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 and it looks, looks like every day there's a story I mean just recently when there were floods and there was a pledge or a, some budget of about a, 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 a billion rand people are saying oh my god that's gonna be stolen please give it to the church rather to to manage how are you gonna deal with that I mean I haven't really had Clearly, why the EFF, why the should, EFF be should be trusted ANC better than the ANC when it comes to matters, it comes to of, matters fiscal of fiscal discipline, matters of, matters taking of, of just taking care of the resources of the people. Just give me one or two things that can convince me that, no, no, these guys are not just going to continue where the ANC uh, left on, off. On corruption, uh, that, is still on, on corruption. that is still going on now. If you look at what COVID, happened during COVID, you look at this asbestos things in the free state, it, it, it just goes on. And people are scared. Right? No matter that who we put in no power, this is, gonna in power this is going to carry on. No, look, I, the levels of, um, levels of corruption in South Africa are the same in all mm. provinces. Mm. Like public so, public representatives, public mm. officials, mm. when they are administering mm. state resources, mm. they always get the attention of substitute part of those resources for yeah. their own personal gain. And at the center yeah. of that problem is the tendering system, the tendering system 
of a contracting state. Yeah. Yeah. That is what the EFF founding manifesto and elections manifesto yeah. deals with. Yeah. Much more decisively. All our election manifesto says we should build state internal capacity to deliver services that the state is mandated yeah. to deliver. Yeah. I, mean, like, yeah. you know, I mean, like, if you know that as a government, you must build roads every day and repair them and keep them in good condition, yeah. why would you want to go on a tender for that all the time? Because there will be competition, and then business people bribe the politicians and officials to award them the tender instead of the competing uh, uh, in, uh, tender premium. So the tendering system is at the center of the corrupted public service in South Africa. Yeah. That is why we say that we need to build state capacity with the aim of abolishing tenders. And that is that is what is going to uproot the corruption. And here in the province of Kwazulu Natal, by the way, yeah. it will uproot the evils of corruption, but also it will uproot the evils of political killings. Yeah. So you must read deeply into the Moerani Commission report as yeah. to what is the root cause of political killings in KwaZulu Natal? It's mostly local councillors yeah. who are competing to have control over the tendering system. Yeah. And, 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 and then they said that maybe there must be transparency in terms of how tenders are administered and given to different companies. Yeah. But we in the Economic Freedom Fighters will say, let us build internal capacity yeah. for the state. But surely that can be the, 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 the silver bullet because part of why you have tenders. It will be. No, part of what you have tenders is that there's poor capacity of the state to do certain things. And that some of the things that have to be done for this community are not the core business of the state. No, no. look, they, you're, they, you're going they, to not take over the role no, of the private sector. No, they, they, that is yeah. a neoliberal view which we exist <laughs> yeah. to demolish as the EFF. Yeah. So the EFF is an anti-imperialist an anti-liberal organization. We are against neoliberalism, which says that the yeah. state doesn't have capacity. The capacity. But it doesn't at the moment. No, you have said it's a weak state so, capacity, so, so the, which must be strengthened. So what the EFF stands for is to mm. build state that capacity. capacity. Yeah. Like, and, and building state capacity, you must build it by doing it. So, yeah. you know, this, uh, uh, in, in East Africa, this uh, uh, people called Bateke people, <laughs> They say you learn how to cut trees by cutting trees, okay. right? Yeah. You don't learn how to cut trees by reading how trees are, are cut. cut. Yeah. You must cut trees to learn how to cut trees. You think trees. that will and we gradually, corruption. And look, look, it will. I'll give you an example of just what we got to do with the relatively minute political power which we have in the cities of Johannesburg, yeah. in the city of Nelson Mandela Bay, in Tswane, almost everywhere where we've, where we've got a say, we, we always come with a motion to insource security guards and cleaners. and so, so yeah. That competition that traditionally or historically will exist between security companies security, or yeah. who gets the tender, that, be it disappears. Yeah. And it also even adds value to the lives yeah. of our people because they get to be given better salaries yeah. with pension funds and protection with medical aid if there is a provision for that yeah. and whatever benefits that come with it. And that yeah. eliminates the space for vicious competition of our control of resources and tenders and everything else there. And we are convinced that yeah. when we take that route much more decisively, yeah. we are going to deal with the twin evils of corruption and of political killings because yeah. that is what is the, the I'm center. I'm going to come to political problem. killings a little, a little yes. later, but just to conclude this one about corruption. Yes. Do you think there is an in internal uh, appetite, if you like, within the EFF to hold your own uh, councillors accountable. I'll tell you why I'm asking. Parliament recently found you guilty, whether right oh, yeah, or wrong, yeah. right? Yeah. But the EFF has never uh, put you in the, under the <laughs> same spotlight. Yeah, because now that, that said to me that it looks like the EFF, you know, sort of sort of packed this thing or dealt with it internally, but externally. Your, your colleagues in Parliament thought, no, 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 you got the case to answer on VBS. No, but the, the, the reason yeah. why is because the EFF conclusively know that there's nothing wrong that I did. Okay. Yes, conclusively knows that. I because see. Because we've dealt with that internally a long time yeah. ago. There was opportunity. It doesn't of irritate course. you yeah, when it, there was it, it, it comes, it comes I, I, that is up why, many you know, times. It doesn't at all. Yeah. That is why I didn't do a road show trying to explain myself over things that are not there. Yes, yes, yes. It's like I remember someone, yeah, yeah, it's like someone saying, you have got horns. 
Yeah. And then he must go around and say, I don't have horns. I yeah. don't have horns. Hey, please come and say, I don't have horns. I must go around and say, I don't have horns. I know I don't have horns. Yeah. But I, it, I know there's nothing wrong that but, we did but, at all. And, and yeah. it actually even was an opportunity. And of course, because of the opportunism yeah. that exists, like they think now we're going to elections. Yeah. Let us utilize our parliamentary majority to criminalize EFF members. And yeah. It's not only that, by the way. Like Almost every... Uh, body in, in parliament that trials EFF members, whether for saying something in parliament, they find them in the negative. But nobody I mean, in like the EFF I think one, one of has One has of been, our members of parliament is yeah. taken to a DC of parliament for saying uh, Sarah Ramaphosa is possibly a criminal yeah. because of Pala Pala. And they, you know, you're, you're charged, he's going to be possibly suspended and his salary suspended and everything else. Yeah. Because that is the political campaign which the ANC has uh, chosen to use as yeah. part of delegitimization of the EFF. And yeah. we're not shaken at all. We'll never be shaken. Yeah. You are taking Parliament on review on this? Yes, on, on, on all those cases. Even you have this. filed papers. Yes, you are taking them on papers. review. We have filed papers. Yeah. And uh, there was a first hearing uh, late last year. Okay. And, uh, and then they said that there will be another hearing. I think before Parliament opens, there will be a sitting in Cape Town High Court. So okay. our lawyers have already taken that for review. You are, you are confident you'll, you'll, you'll come with roses, smelling like roses so, so, out of no, this one? I'm, confident is an understatement. I know that we're going to win. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, what Parliament did was just absolutely rubbish and, and foolish. All right. So I, I'm, I'm not, it's not even about being, I'm, I'm not even thinking that yeah. it's either this or this. If we have got legitimate courts in South Africa that yeah. look into facts, mm. I know that that issue will be clarified because. Yeah. Uh, it, it's an easy one to deal with. A lot of people nervous about your funders and, 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 and believing that what SARS is doing to clamp down on Mazoti, I'm just going to be blunt about okay. it, right, has to do somehow with a political machination of trying to close your source of funding. Is that, is that a conspiracy theory? But Mazoti is not a funder of the EFF. Mazoti yeah. progressively contributed for the party registration of the EFF. And that was all? That was all. Yeah. So it's never, yeah. it's not a it's, continuous it's, funder. No, it's never been. But why don't you ever clarify that? Because people have, have always put it no. in a box that says you have, have been funded by cigarette smugglers. No, you name we have it. clarified that on yeah. several occasions. Yeah. If he was a funder of the EFF, we're going to declare that to the, to IEC, the IEC to say that he is one of the funders. And, and he's not forbidden, by the way, if he feels that he wants to fund the EFF, yeah. he can do so and then we'll declare with the IEC that we got a donation from uh, Mr. Adriano Mazzotti. Yeah. Let's take some calls. Uh, I, I understand we've got some calls. Let's see whether we can talk to some people. Uh, good evening. Good evening. I can't hear. Yeah, bro. With Otin Malindesio, EPA, Obohodi, Obo Sentewe, Obo Pepe, SS, Gobaban to Beka Lange. You cannot criticize Aguleo to Mangoba, Kabul, and Joban Kurum, and Jemangoba. The Kuruska, I say, as a full party, I can Kurum and no friend to work. No fantasy, then the All right. <laughs> I'm completely lost. Did you, did you hear? Did you get the question? I, I did not get, because this facility didn't get to transmit what was being oh, said. Oh, okay. So, Let, let's, we'll have yeah. to take, did you have another call? Good evening. All right, doesn't look like we have another call. Let, let's carry on. I want us to come to, the, uh, uh, will you, they'll let us if there's another call. Yes. Let's talk about the political killings. You take the, maybe they assume the EFF, according to your projection, take over your now government of 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 the of KwaZulu Natal. I mean, it's completely a killing field right now. I mean, I'm sure it's not an exaggeration. Just last week, six people were killed in their house. The week before, there was another shooting somewhere in Kwamashu. It goes on. It it is not ending, right? Uh, if it's not councillors, it's business people getting shot, etc. People are going around with bodyguards and, and AK-47s, you know. 
I was even nervous just, just announcing where you will be, you know, uh, tonight. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 we're living in fear here in this province, and it's not an exaggeration. How are you going to solve it? No, I, let's do a proper reading as well of, mm. of the murder raids in South Africa. Mm. Right? The, and let's separate the two things. Mm. There's a huge crisis of murder in South Africa, of killing of people, yeah. of human beings in South Africa. I mean, in yeah. the 2022-2023 period, it was upward of 27,000 murder cases mm. that got to okay. So how murder gets to be counted by uh, crime statisticians and by the South African police services, they will say it's 50 per 100,000. Like, people get killed per year and everything else. There. Yeah. And in the current 2022-2023 statistics, the Eastern Cape is at 56 yeah. per 100,000, and then followed by KwaZulu Natal mm. and Western Cape. So the Eastern Cape has got far much more higher incidence of murder than KwaZulu Natal yeah. and Houting and the Western Cape. And one, one thing you'll get to realize is that these murder cases in the whole of South Africa, 83% of them happen in only four provinces, like the four. Like, and Another way statistic which is very complex to, to could understand is that the Southern Police Service has got about 1,126 uh, police districts, like uh, police precincts, and more than 50% of the murders happen in only 12% of those. And you know good way, where those areas are. It will be Inanda, Yen, Kwazulu Natal, Umlazi, Kwamashu. It's Delft in the Western Cape. It's a township called Mfulini in, in the Western Cape. It's a, a part of Kailicha, it's Umtata, it's Lusikisiki in the Western Cape, and Flagstaff. It's Rustenburg as well in the Northwest. In the Northwest, very small component of where the killings are happening, majority of yeah. them. And the the all the people who are paying attention to the killings, or the general murder of people. Let's deal with that first aspect first. Yeah. Are saying that there has to be specific yeah. responses to all those communities as to what is the real cause of these murder cases because sometimes it's gangs and revenge that on a context, vicious, like vicious like circle of maybe a different context now yeah, yeah. yeah now in terms of political killings mm. now a properly conducted research which was actually done through a commission of inquiry here in the province yes. of Kwazulu Natal identifies two major aspects about political killings in the province one is that it's local councillors who get killed mm. And the killings are intra-party killings. It's not IFP councillors, ANC. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's not the violence between political parties. It's yeah. intra-party killings. Sure. And the Moerani Commission says the reason why they kill each other inside the parties is because they want to gain control over the tendering system mm. for self-enrichment. That is mm. why I was saying earlier that part of our solutions to dealing with the two evils mm, is, to get, rid of the is tender to, get, system. to get rid of the tender system but also to raise the bar as to who become our public representatives yeah, they were saying because that the bar is 80 too low 80 percent year of councillors yes. don't have a metric yeah so it's the, the bar is too low in terms of so people realize that actually you can become a councillor and the next thing you're driving a huge range rover and You've got a huge house, you've got a lot of girlfriends, and all of these things, and all white parties, and all of these things. <laughs> and then they yeah. say, but this one we're growing up with here. He's yeah. like us, why is he there? Yeah. Then they realize that for us to enter there where he is, we'll have to kill him so that we can enter. It Jesus. happens within political parties. In, in, in 99, actually 100% of the times, there's never been a situation where, except in the recent incident in a... Nongoma way. Where the DA councillor was no, 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 where the, the DA councillor was, was killed. killed yeah. Yeah. But it looks like there were some other internal issues that they were dealing with there. We, if you think a DA. No, not, not within the DA. Yeah. The dynamics of Umgeni. The, the locality. Itself, the locality yes. Yes. Yeah. And then there was an incident when old woman was killed. A 79 year old woman was killed in Nongoma because of the NFP, IFP differences and yeah. the small margins through which the IFP was government and was later on removed uh, to be replaced by an NFP mayor uh, and a deputy mayor who comes from the EFF. Yeah. So the, 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 
the killings are in their party mostly to control the resources of the state. And there has to be a far much more sustainable solution. Now, I must, I must state this, which is very important. We have never had intra-party killings within the, the EFF. EFF. Yeah. We yeah. have 168 councillors here in this province. Mm. We have recalled possibly 30 now because of uh, those who did not comply with the organizational mandate. Yeah. But there has never been any threat of those who are going to replace those, including from the former councillors, including from the general membership of the EFF because we have got maximum discipline and proper political education that we conduct internally as to just what is this economic freedom that we are fighting for. Yeah. And by the way, that is what the Commission recommends, that political parties must be able to educate and conscientize their, their members, members. Yeah. much more effectively. And we have done that successfully uh, here in the province of Kwazulu Natal. So if the EFF becomes, not if, when the EFF becomes government in all municipalities, it means that... Yeah. This thing of killing each other for political reasons, end. Is, 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 it will be things of the past. Yeah. Okay, we'll see about that, uh, yeah. because that sounds to be a big, big promise over there. Uh, we are on Frank Dialogue on your radio, coming to you live from Kozulu Natal, and with my guest here, Deputy President of the Economic Freedom Fighters, Floyd Chivam. Let's take a little a listen to some voice notes from uh, the people who are listening and participating tonight. JJ. Uh, good show as always. Uh, Makaya here from Cape Town. I just wanted to maybe pose some question or two to the DP. Uh, the first one is we know very well and we've seen how the EFF has been growing and it's really commendable to see how <clears throat> the growth is particularly not only in South Africa, but then in the African continent at large. So I just maybe want to um, get the comments from the DP as to what is the real intention, because we can see the CIC is currently moving across Africa. Uh, he was in Ghana recently and other parts of Africa as well. With the manifesto launch being very close, is it not something where all members particularly the leadership of the eff where they should be engaged in this process of mobilizing all the ground forces and you know getting the ground fertile in ready for the uh, eff manifesto launch hi my name is pamanda <coughs> I'd like to know uh, or find out from the deputy of the EFF, what are they willing to do? Like, had they noticed that when we watch soapies and dramas and all of that in South Africa, like there's always a bad narrative when it comes to the, you know, African people or the natives. Like what we see on TV is not something that uh, one can aspire to. We see a lot of violence, like we don't get to see good stories of our black people and we don't get to see the stories that are celebrating a black family and unity within a black family. So what are they prepared to do to make sure that there are mechanisms in place and people are held accountable for what they script and what they air on the national TV? I also have um, another question when it comes to the matters of uh, uh, South African football. We have seen that uh, we have this guy that has been you know, at the helm of the SAFA, South African Football Association. So like, I'd like to find out for the EFF, should they uh, take part? Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Mm. Good evening to our Deputy President, um, uh, with superior logic, Mr. Fred Shibambo. Uh, my first question is with regard to finding out from the DP as to if and which is going to happen. When the EFF takes over the power of the country in whatever means necessary, uh, how, are they, how is the EFF going to address the issue uh, which has to do with the the, 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 the the shielding by the white monopoly capital 
of the supply chain in every aspect of the economy um, in order to benefit the previously disadvantaged uh, black people of this country because it appears that the reason or the more specific reason there is a poverty in this country and no participation by the black majority in the economy of the country. Good evening, JJ and uh, DP of the EFF, uh, Commissioner Floyd, and, and, and all the listeners. Well, I, I, I understand the, the point of the EFF in relation to the national election this year. What the EFF says is, is that the, the, the first uh, preferences is to win government, is to win the election. Then if that doesn't happen, the EFF wants to work with the opposition party to consolidate government. That's the second part. Now, if that doesn't happen, then the EFF will then vote with the opposition to constitute government. But even though they are not part of the government, that's what happened in the city of Ekuruleni and uh, in Jobek previously. You vote with other to constitute government, but don't participate because the guys, they don't want you. So that's, that's easy. We vote the president's forces of the DA, and then we, we take the, the opposition benches. And that, that's going to be very interesting. I, I think I, I, I understand very well what the DP is trying to to, to articulate it to you. Climate Lusufi from Tempisa. Thank you. All right. Let's let's answer some of those questions. Let, let's start with the first one. They're saying the, 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 the CIC is all over Africa uh, instead of being here and mobilized. I'm not sure what, what the dichotomy is, there, but answer the question no, anyway. He, the, the president and commander in chief is performing the most revolutionary work of the this pan-Africanist revolutionary organization. Yeah. Because what characterizes the EFF ultimately is to achieve continental unification. Mm. It is paused uh, by Haley Selassie, by Seko Tore, by Kwame Nkrumah. Mm. And we cannot just do that by sitting back here in South Africa and call on unification without having practical engagement yeah. with uh, all the formations out there. So in Liberia, he went to participate in the inauguration of the recently elected president of Liberia. And you remember in Liberia, we've got a very strong presence of the economic freedom fighters, the mm. Liberian uh, economic freedom fighters, and, and, mm. and, and which takes full mandate and guidance politically, ideologically, from the EFF here in South Africa. Yeah. We have the EFF in Namibia. In Namibia, we actually even got to be elected in parliament through the mm. Namibian Economic Freedom Fighters, which has got uh, two seats now of the 180-odd uh, members of parliament of Namibia. Yeah. And we, we are going to grow that number significantly. In 2024, November elections in, uh, in Namibia, when we're done here, yeah. we're going to Windhoek, we're going to all the areas yeah. in Namibia to uh, bring about because this illusion that we're just going to achieve economic emancipation, economic liberation only here mm. in South Africa, it's just delusional. It's yeah. not It's not what we're in pursuit of. We are taking a lesson from Kwame Nkrumah who said that although Ghana was the first country in the sub-Saharan uh, Africa to uh, gain political independence, they said that this independence of Ghana means nothing until the entire African continent yeah. is fully liberated. And he, he committed resources for the liberation of um, the entire African continent. That is what we're in pursuit of because it, it, will, be, it will be just useless to could just pursue, uh, to pursue economic emancipation here in the continent whilst white colonial settlers continue to control resources in Malawi, in yeah. Zimbabwe, in Zambia, in the Chad, in the Gambia in uh, Tanzania, in Burundi, in all the uh, African countries. So we have to purposefully build a pan-continental movement that is going to bring about economic emancipation, real economic liberation to all the people of Africa because we are one people. Yeah. The second uh, question that talks about 
um, um, the the issue about telling the African story. I want to link the two a little bit because yes. uh, part of the criticism has been about your so-called borderless South Africa. Yeah. Right. Um, and people are making comments about that. You say now oh, there he is. Now he's over there. It's not about South Africa. It's about the rest. We all understand that you know there may be a confusion there about dialectics. But let me just address it simply. No, look, you do know, you know <laughs> the. You know, the continental unification is the most logical thing to could do because what colonialism did was to break the African continent into what Kwame Nkrumah says, a small non-viable states and countries mm. which are unable to economically develop by themselves. So for you to develop an economy, you need to have a relationship with whoever is closer to you mm. in terms of trade, in terms of uh, mm. exchange of resources. If Mozambique has got gas which can be transformed into electricity, you must be able to optimally utilize that gas of Mozambique to bring electricity to South Africa. If there is water that comes from Lesotho, it must be utilized easily to benefit yeah. the entire subcontinent. If there is natural resources here in South Africa that can benefit the continent, we should all share in our resources. And to achieve that, you need infrastructure that must connect the continent. Because if yeah. you check the real infrastructure, for instance, from Mozambique, from here in South Africa, almost all the railways are leading to the ocean mm. so that we can take out of there. There is no yeah. intra-African integration of the infrastructure that is going to enhance yeah. our, our growth in terms of the economy, in terms of the jobs that must be created. The only way we're going to defeat yeah. poverty permanently is when we integrate our economies and develop much more sustainably. And for you to have an economy that works as one, you can't have borders. Those borders must be bridges of economic integration yeah. and participation. We must benefit so you support, out of you each support other. the African trade the, uh, We do, we do, we do, been, yeah. We do you. support the Africa free trade area, yeah. continental agreement, mm. in terms of how uh, it has been uh, put in place. Like that. I'm sure when all, all, there's an adequate number of countries that have ratified it. But yeah. our emphasis is that it must not be abused by neo-colonial forces to freely trade goods and services that are made elsewhere. Yeah. So the African continent must utilize the Africa free trade continental uh, trade area yeah. to industrialize domestically and then trade the locally produced goods amongst ourselves. Mm. That is what it should achieve because we can say it's free trade and then you find a, a company from Europe or from Vietnam or from China to go and produce goods in Swaziland so that they can have free access to South Africa. Not yeah. like that. We want to grow the African economy. Yeah. We industrialize the entire, African con the entire continent so that we can collectively uh, prosper all of us. That is yeah. what we're in pursuit of and we think that is achievable. In the, in, the, in the immediate horizon. I mean, like, uh, despite his reactionary connotations, uh, Ruto was saying that let, let people come to Kenya, those who want to visit. Uh, Kagame, yes. despite some of the questionable things that he does, he says let people come to Rwanda yeah. for, for, for economic opportunities. Actually, most of East Africa is taking that direction. And uh, it will happen with West Africa, it must happen with Southern Africa and all of us must collectively get to benefit yeah. what, what from the, our economic resources. The, the, that caller was, was asking was that there seems to be a bad narrative about Africa and Africans yeah. in our television, is, is, in our art and culture space. It's just, a historical... Just, it's a historical yeah, what are you going to do about that? Because people are nervous that the EFF, when they come yes, in, it's a the media must start burden. running. It's a historical burden which yeah. we, we literally took from a very long time ago. Yeah. I remember these people, the Caucasians, first refused to recognize us as human beings mm. for years. Mm. Like, they first refused to recognize all people of African ancestry as human beings. Mm. Like, when they were trading slaves, they were, like, they were putting tags on them. Like they would call them like, with the names of bulls. They said, I've got four bulls, or mm. four what? And then trade them easily. And easily kill them, easily mm. throw them into the oceans. 
And even when slavery was abolished, yeah. those who had to give off or free off the slaves were even compensated by government to say, now you have taken my slaves, you must give me something yeah. in return. So first they, f they refused to recognize as human beings. Yeah. When they recognized as human beings, they didn't allow us political rights. Mm. Then they didn't, they've never allowed us economic rights. That is why we have to fight as a collective. All black people in the entire world must fight as a, as a collective for true emancipation from the vestiges of colonialism, of slavery, of, of the, the indignation that has been subjected uh, and, 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 and affected on all black people, of all people of African ancestry. We need to fight together with all the people in the, the African diaspora, in the Caribbean, in Brazil, and everywhere else where we are found, we must fight as a collective yeah. because we've got a long way to go. Like, if you were to gauge yeah. the global economic benefits and participation, if the global economy was 100 rand, all of us of African ancestry, we account for one rand or less. Yeah. The Caucasians, and through our resources, have taken everything else. And then if we're still going to then subdivide ourselves and stratify ourselves that, no, this one is Zulu, this one is Shona, this one is Tonga, this one is... And Debele, this one is so too. Then we're, we're, we're being backward. We're yeah. not going to be Tell able me about to the media and, and in how terms you, of what will be your attitude towards the media when you come to power. Look, me, me, media must freely exist, must freely exist. But but there are, there are very strong trends that are emerging where you have got media spaces and platforms which are owned by the establishment, by capitalists. Yeah. And then those capitalists, then they think that they are going to utilize their, their, their media platforms yeah. to harass everyone, mm. to selectively report, to banish those that do not agree with them, yeah. to fight with them, to the extent that they think that people or public representatives are accountable to the media house, not to the people. Yeah. Like, so media must freely exist. The good thing is that now it is being opened, it's being democratized. There are platforms through which we can communicate directly to our people. So media must, must, must exist, yeah. must be able to uh, do whatever they want to do and everything else. But we must be able to speak as well directly to our people, even without the mediated platform. Okay. Now tell me about the football. You know, we're at the Afri African Cup of Nations as we speak now. And uh, one of the callers is talking about the Danny Jordan who's been in power in soccer forever. Um, and I, I, think, I do think the CIC spoke a little bit about that at some point, but there always a divided um, opinion when it comes to soccer in, in, in our country because it's such yeah. a favorite. Well, so what do you, you want know to do the, about that? You know, the, transformation uh, in that arena. You know, so the... The, the Federation of International Football Association, FIFA, mm. builds a very strong wall between political leadership yeah. and administration of football in all countries. Mm. Just a minor intervention to try to guide even. They yeah. will suspend the entire football association <laughs> yeah. from global participation. Yeah. Of course, as football fans, we're not the government ourselves now. We can say yeah. that Dini Jordan is not helping football in South Africa. Yeah. And we must encourage all the 52 regions of SAFA to think differently in terms of how they constitute leadership of SAFA. Yeah. And then maybe get fresh blood and people who will pay attention to how the sport must be run. But it's not the role of government and political leadership to, uh, to direct football administrative aspects and all those interventions. Yeah. FIFA has purposefully drawn a clear line yeah. between uh, football administration and political leadership. I mean, Kenya was taken out of the CAF and FIFA process because of what government tried to do the football association. Zimbabwe was taken out as well yeah. for the same interferences. So we, 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 we should, of course, promote the development of sports, particularly school sports, sports yes. and then make sure that these uh, adequately prepared and trained uh, players who are going to later on uh, feed into the national team and uh, are able to contribute to a winning uh, country. That must be done. At a political level, we can give the infrastructure and the support for the development of the entire sport. And then we encourage, not instruct, encourage the football associations to choose the best amongst themselves to lead football in South Africa. We are on frank dialogue on your radio in conversation tonight 
with uh, the Deputy President of the Economic Freedom Fighters, Mr. Floyd Chivambu. We're going to take a break. After the break, we round off that conversation. You can still call us, send us some voice notes uh, in order uh, to deepen this conversation. The 10th of February at Moses Mabida, they are threatening to fill up that stadium. In fact, they are confident they will do so ahead of an election that they also promise to take uh, away. Stay tuned. My question to the CIC, there are a few things that I want to get to about the EFF. Uh, there is a belief that EFF is just a one-man show. It is run by Julius, and what Julius says, it goes. How true or how uh, incorrect is that, that uh, EFF is just a one-man show that is run by Julius? A uh, second part is I want to know that, um, are you seeing the growth in the province of KwaZulu-Natal? since the uh, the conference that you had that mr twala won we know that there was vusi caused by that time but lately we're seeing that uh, the eff doesn't get numbers when it's come to the by-elections that were held here in guazulu natal that the second question the third question would be uh, i would like to pick your mind on the latest incident and uh, uh, the words that were crossing up between the EFF and Mr. Mkunu, what do you make of that as a EFF? Do you know what happened to his briefing that uh, he was attacked? Uh, does the EFF know? Are there any members of theirs who are part of that or not? Thank you very much. 
Good evening, uh, Prof. My name is Koli Lemtiane from uh, North Coast Radio. I just wanted to know if um, is EFF ready to go into coalition with um, other 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 political parties, as we saw uh, when uh, they they resigned, they they, they instructed their members to um, resign especially here in uh, the city of Mklatuze. The deputy mayor was uh, uh, Mr. Nkulego uh, Ngubani. He resigned because the government is EFF ready this time. Thank you. All right. Interesting, interesting questions there. Let's, let's start with this last one because it, it links to the question I had about uh, Eto It looks like this chaos there in terms of uh, collaboration or an attempted collaboration between the ANC and EF. She's saying that are you ready? He's asking a, a, a deeper question. Are you ready okay. for marriage? No, with no, no. Other this, parties? no so this is, so this, let's differentiate. Mm. This, uh, we, when we, after the 2021 elections, we voted for majority of the times for IFP mayors mm. to take government in Tlatuze, in Mapumulo, in Nongoma, in Zulan district, mm. uh, in Newcastle, in Denhausa. And in an agreement where they said that the EFF should have, must be appointed as deputy mayors so that mm. our public representatives and councillors must begin to mm. gain some traction. Yeah. And then in further discussions with the IFP, where we said that we should, as EFF, take one of the municipalities directly as mayor, yeah. and then the, the IFP becomes deputy, deputy mayor. Yeah. The IFP uh, like, uh, outrightly refused, and then we yeah. then pulled out of the, those arrangements that we had with them yeah. in different Because municipalities. Because in original yeah. agreement, which they reneged. Yes. Then yeah. we then said we are not going to vote with the IFP. We were able to remove them in Mapumulo, uh, we're going to remove them. We'll remove them in Nongoma and consider different government. Mm. We're going to remove them in Newcastle and in the, in the This motion of no confidence, which has just been uh, approved now, so that we, 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 we say to IFP, you can't want to constitute government almost everywhere in the province by of yourself, Natal yeah. by yourselves and without the EFF. The EFF has got proper support here in the province of Kwazulu Natal. Here in Etekwini, we are far much stronger than the IFP. And in part of the Midlands as well, was stronger than the IFP. In part of the South, in the, in the South Coast, was stronger than the IFP. So we are a legitimate political party that is existing here in the province of KwaZulu Natal, which must not be juniorized yeah. or like treated as if it's some party which is not welcome. The people of KwaZulu Natal have embraced the economic freedom fighters. We are ready as the EFF to participate in government. We are actually participating in government and responsible for huge responsibilities. In the yeah. city of Johannesburg, we have got the members of the mayoral committee who are responsible for public safety mm. of the biggest city here in the subcontinent. The, the busiest city is the public safety of the city of Johannesburg is under leadership of the EFF, including health. Mm. So all the 177 clinics that are under the city of uh, Johannesburg are being politically overseen by a, a, a member of the EFF and is doing so efficiently. In a, yeah. a Korolein, we have got the responsibilities, including finance, including uh, environment and waste, which we are significantly improving in terms of rubbish collections, which the ANC and the DA failed to deal with much more efficiently. We're responsible for health care as well. Here in the city of Etequin, yeah. we are responsible for Human Settlement and Infrastructure Committee. So the regional chairperson of the EFF here, Temba Mvumbu, is the chair of, uh, like, de facto MMC. Yeah. is the MMC, but it's called chairperson here because it's an ESCO system. MMC of Human Settlement of in, in, in Infrastructure. Yeah. And